that 1 is 0 0.9 repeating. All right, how can we show that? Well, what is 0.9 repeating? 0.99999 is really what? It is 9 times 1 tenth plus 9 times 1 one hundredth plus 9 times 1 one thousandth plus dot dot dot, right? Now, if I would take this thing and multiply it by 10, so I'm going to call that S, what is 10S? What's going to happen to this all this sum here? It's going to become what? 9.999, right? Which means every one of those gets knocked off. And what happens if I do 10S minus S? All these point nines go away. What's left? 9. Because this is 9 plus 9 times 1 tenth plus 9 times 1 one hundredth plus dot dot dot. What happens? That cancels, that cancels, that cancels, that cancels, that cancels, that cancels. Right? They all cancel from there to infinity. What's the only number that's left? 9. And so I have s is equal to, well, what's 10s? Sorry. What's 10s minus s? The sum has to be 1. What this actually tells us is the following. All terminating decimals have two forms, and this is important. That would mean things like, for example, 0 0.125 is actually equal to 0 0.1249999 forever. 0 0.3 is 0 0.29999 forever. Those are the same number. So this will become important when we have a problem, like when we did rational numbers. Why did we say no common factors? We said no common factors because I wanted to have one rational number, right? One half is one half. 2 fourth, right, 2 fourths goes to the exact same place, 0.5, as 1 half does. But what did we say? I need uniqueness of numbers. So I throw away 2 fourths. That's not rational, right? It's not in simplest form. 3 ninths, not rational. It's not in simplest form. So we want uniqueness. This automatically gives us a problem. If I ever need uniqueness, and what was, how did I define real numbers? All real numbers were just simply a decimal, right? A decimal that either terminates, repeats, or neither terminates nor repeats. If it terminates or repeats, it's rational. If it's neither, it's irrational. This automatically tells us that special rational numbers have actually have two decimal forms, which is, could be bad if we, if we need uniqueness. And so we're going to deal with that in some proofs. We're going to say things like, OK, I'm going to represent things by decimals. But that leads to a problem. I'm going to represent things by decimals, and I'm never going to allow an infinite number of nines. I just take the infinite nine version and just say, just throw it away. That is not an allowed decimal. I'm only going to allow terminating, right? Not their infinite nine version. 